Hi, so yesterday I finally had some time to check out a new version of Spectra Layers by Steinberg. And in between I was browsing YouTube and saw a lot of videos pop up about Sonable Smart Gate. Now these videos were all by YouTube channels which had apparently gotten a preview version of this product because they were able to release their video all on the same day that the product was released. Many of them were quite positive so I decided to check out Smartgate as well and because I just came off the Spectra Layers train I noticed that there were some similarities between these products. So in this video I will do a shootout to separate the individual drums from this drum loop. So let's go. Now in general, Steinberg Spectral Layers and Sonable Smartgate are of course two very different tools for two very different purposes. Spectral Layers is an audio editor that allows you to edit different layers separated by spectral qualities in a lot of different ways. And Sonable Smartgate, well, it's a gate. It's typically used to suppress bleed in a recorded track or for more creative sound shaping purposes. However, they also have some overlap and similarities. For example, Spectral Layers has a function to unmix drums from a stereo drum loop so that it gets split out in the different elements of the drum set. And Sonable Smartgate is also able to filter out individual drums from a drum loop by using its smart features. One of the three videos on the Sonable website is even about this feature. How do you use Smartgate on a drum loop to filter out individual drum hits instead of having to slice a drum loop manually? Now I know that typically a gate is not used for this purpose of course, but it's more used on the recordings of individual drum elements to suppress the bleed of the other drums in that recording. But Smartgate is different. So let's have a look. So this is the website of Sonable Smartgate. And Smartgate features intelligent source detection that focuses on your selected target source in the signal. In comparison with conventional gates, SmartGate delivers solid results and makes parametrization incredibly fast and easy. So it has content aware processing, a wide range of instruments and sound profiles for that content awareness, and visual guidance, and apart from gating, it can also do ducking. There's a free trial for 30 days, so by all means, if you're interested, go check it out. And one of the main distinguishing features of this gate is that it does not just work on the level of the whole signal, but it actually goes for a certain source which it finds in your track, and then you can make the gate work based on where that source is actually doing something in your track. There's lots of visual insights of course, kind of what we're used to from the Sonable plugins. And at the moment they offer it for a reduced introductory price of 89 euros. So let's check it out in Cubase. Now I'm going to try it out on this drum loop from the Anderson pack of Make Pop Music and I'll provide a link in the description below. Probably not the easiest loop to split up because the drums are hitting quite close together sometimes. There's ghost notes on the snare and the hi-hat is hitting at the same time as some of the other drums. So let's duplicate this track and put smart gate on it. And let's first go for the kick. Now over here, if you don't set any target here, this works as a normal gate. So let's have a look at the elements here. On top you see the gating action where the gate opens or closes original signal in gray, as well as the part in white, which is coming through the gate at the moment. Now by varying the threshold of the gate, you can see that we can make the gate open only on the peaks of the signal or more on the whole signal. And if I bring back the sound now, you can see that it's quite difficult to target just the kick, for example, because the snare is equally or maybe even more loud than the kick. This is probably the best I can do at the moment. Now let's reset the plugin and engage the smart feature because over here I can also say that I want to target the kick sound in this signal. And then it waits until I play audio so that it can look for the kick sound in my stereo loop. Now it has done a reasonable job in finding the kick in this drum loop, but we can optimize it a bit more. But let's first have a short look at the smart gate user interface so that you can see what's happening now. It's not a full tutorial on the use of this plugin. If you want me to do that, let me know in the comments, but I think there's probably lots of videos about that already. But still, let's have a quick look. Because if I look at this without the sound, you can see that there is now also a green part in the middle display. And the green part basically tells you where the selected source, the kick drum, is playing in this track. And with the threshold, as for a standard gate, you can now define when the gate opens up. But now 
the plugin only looks at activity of the source signal and not at activity of all the drum elements in the signal. So let's try to tweak it a bit more to get rid of that snare sound that we were still hearing. Yeah, part of the problem is now that the snare is sometimes still sounding quite quickly after the kick hit. And because we have the release at 100 milliseconds, you can still hear the snare within the 100 milliseconds from the kick hit. So by reducing the release a bit, we can probably get rid of the snare a bit more. Let's try that. Yeah, that already reduces the snare sound a lot. You're still hearing the hi-hat, of course, because it's playing at the same time as the kick. So with a the gate, there's not really a way to get rid of that. Because when it opens, it will open for everything at that moment. So let's leave it at this for now. Let's move on to the snare. So let's now set the target at snare drum. And let's see what the AI comes up with. And you can sort of hear a similar thing in that the kick gets suppressed mostly, but not all the time because it's hitting so close to the snare sometimes that it probably falls within the release of the snare. So we can still cut that out a little bit by reducing the release, but it will also make our snare sound a bit tighter because we're cutting off the end of the snare sound as well. Let's have a look. So now we have mostly the snare sound, including the ghost notes, even though they are much lower in level than the kick, of course. Let's see what Smartgate can do with the hi-hat sound, which is probably the most difficult one of all. Yeah, I think when you want to get rid of that kick sound, then you can probably only do that by also cutting out the hi-hat hit at that kick sound. So let's see how Spectral Layers does now. But before I do that, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and ring the little bell icon if you want to know when I publish another video. If you're really grateful, you can use the super thanks button below or buy anything through the affiliate links to these stores, which you can find in the description as well. Highly appreciate it. Let's have a look at Spectral Layers 10 for this job. If we look at Spectral Layers website, you can see that it is meant for spectral editing and repair. You can use the AI to select certain patterns in your spectral display. You can use it for creative sound sculpting, repair and restore. It has Aura integration, so you can use it directly from Cubase. Even though it's a separate editor as well, you can also use it just directly in Cubase, like I will show you in a minute. Extract audio to independent layers so you can edit them separately. And that's also a feature we're going to use in the unmixing of drums. And these are the current prices, the full version, the version with a competitive cross grade. If you, for example, already have an Isotope RX product or Adobe Audition, and there's also a cheaper elements version. So let's set it up in Cubase. So in this case, I'm going to work on the main track here called Long Groove. You can go to Audio, Extensions, Spectral Layers, and the drum loop shows up in the main Spectral Layers interface. If we then go to Unmix Drums, we can preview a certain element, kick, snare, or cymbal, which is basically the way Spectral Layers will split out this event. But let's just do this. And as you can see, we now have three layers under this long groove over here, kick, snare, and cymbals, and they are colored differently in the spectral display. And we can now play them individually. Now what you can also do with spectral layers is import these into Cubase. We can just drag and drop them over here. And we can now close spectral layers and I'll quickly rename them. And then we can now also solo them in Cubase.
So let's now compare the output of the individual drums between smart gate and spectral layers. Kick first. For the snare. The hi hat. And none of these are probably good enough to use separately as individual drum hits, but maybe we can use this to add an effect to one of the elements of the loop, for example, add reverb to just the snare and not to the other elements. So then we basically mix in the individual hit plus the effect to the original drum loop. Let's try that. So what I've done now is on the Sonable snare track, I've inserted a reverb and I've set the mix to 100% because we're only going to use this track for adding reverb to the original loop. And that reverb on the gated snare sounds like this. It's quite a long reverb. But the trick is of course that I'm going to mix it in with the original loop now. So let's start at zero for the reverb at the original loop. So that sounds quite usable. Let's do the same thing on the spectral layer snare track. So I'm going to start by soloing this one and I've added the same reverb, same settings, 100% wet, which sounds like this on the spectral layer snare track. Let's also solo the original track and start with zero reverb and slowly add it. I would say also quite usable. But let me know what you think in the comments below, both on using the split tracks for effects only, as well as your opinion on the raw split sounds from SmartGate as well as Spectral Layers. I'm very curious about how you feel about the latest state of artificial intelligence for unmixing drums. Now the conclusion for me is that I found for both unmixing options, kick and snare work best. It's really tough on hi-hats, both for smart gate as well as spectral layers. In general, spectral layers was faster to use because basically you could not do any tweaking afterwards. So you just had to live with the results that it provided. And I also think that spectral layers gave better separation. You heard less of the other drums in the spectral layers output, but at the cost of phasing artifacts, which were not there in the smart gate output. But the smart gate output did have more traces of the other drums in the results and it sounded more choppy, but well, it's a gate, right? I could have also set the gate to not close fully, but then you would still hear more of the original signal in the output. Now, I would probably not use the results of either of these tools separately, but in combination with the original loop to add a certain effect to one of the drum elements, I think that works pretty well. So that's still a big win if you only have a stereo loop and you want to apply some sort of processing on one of the elements within that stereo loop. Now, if you want to dive more into details about how to use a traditional gate, I also have a video about that, which I'll link over here. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.